Hey, Rose, want to grab a drink? Your happiest hour of the week starts now. Sit back, relax, and enjoy because Because the the drinks drinks are are on us. us. (laughs) Welcome back to Drinks on Us. I'm Riley. And I'm Rose. We are so happy you joined us for Happy Hour. You guys, we have such an exciting episode today. We have a special guest. She's an influencer and soon-to-be reality star. I can just see it coming. Her name is Renee. We can't wait for you guys to hear all about her and her upcoming adventures. Um, I think it's going to be really awesome. I'm excited. Right? are you? Oh my gosh. Renee is so cute. And I think you guys are going to absolutely love the conversations that we had with her. Yeah. I hope we get the 411 on the what's coming up on the reality. Maybe we'll get like a little sneak peek. Yes. Love it. Okay. So before we bring her on, of course, we need to chit chat about our weekend. And before we get into all of that, what's in your cup tonight, Ray? Okay, tonight I'm actually drinking tea because I have such a sore throat. I'm so annoyed. Been there. I'm so sorry, sis. Do you think you got it in Savannah? Well, you had it both. Yeah, so it started hurting like at the end of the last day. And then we flew home and I knew something was coming on. Like, you know, when you can feel it, like you're like, oh, I'm getting sick. And then last night I felt really bad. This morning I felt really bad. And... I feel like I'm actually maybe hopefully getting a little bit better. I don't feel sick at all. It's literally just my throat. It's so weird. That is so weird. I actually, I would say mine, it was very similar. The throat was the worst part for me, but for sure. But I did feel like Abby Lee was on my head. So I had the head cold too. Oh my God. I, that's always what I say when I have a sinus headache. I say (laughs) Abby's on my head. Not Abby Lee on your head. <laughs> well, what what oh. kind of what kind of tea do you have? Is it helping? I don't. Okay, tell me. I have peppermint tea because that's all that I had in my house. Is that even good for a sore throat? It just feels good because it's hot. I think any tea is gonna help. I think um, I believe licorice and milk thistle in your tea helps with like helping with like a cold. But because you don't have a cold, I just think the act of having tea with honey. Did you add okay. honey? No, because I'm actually, one, I'm out of honey. And two, I feel like peppermint and honey is not a very appetizing combo. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, well, I hope you get better. Maybe some cough drops. Are you coughing? Um, I actually just started coughing before this podcast. So hopefully I don't have to hack one up. <laughs> if you do, we, the Duke crew will understand. <laughs> What okay. happened to me, I feel like at the, at night, it would always get worse, like nights and yeah. mornings. So maybe you're going through that. Yeah. Well, I doubled my armor dosage and I'm taking zinc. So I feel like honestly, we just like did not sleep over the weekend and we not were awake. outside at night with not with, like we didn't have jackets on. So I feel like I just caught a little something, but mm-hmm. we'll recap our weekend. Um, but first I need to know Oops. what's in your cup. My cup is boring. I um, am drinking my second to last cranberry fizz poppy. We talked about it last week and I've been craving it all week, but I'm like, I need to save it for the podcast. So yeah, I'm giving Christmas vibes, which I know you yelled at me last week for talking about Christmas, but um, uh, it's, I'll so, forgive you. it's so good. This flavor, if you're listening poppy, which I know you're not, can you bring, <laughs> <laughs> can you bring cranberry fizz back? Like just, I need them to make it a different can if you're watching on youtube it's like ornaments because this could be around like cranberry in neutrals high noons it deserves a yearly maybe they could say they could rebrand it for summer as a cranberry spritz please poppy i'm wearing your sweatsuit right now we're your number one fans i know please take our advice yeah please um i think everyone would agree with that though because everyone loves the cranberry fizz so anyways that's what i'm sipping on yeah. Um, well, should we recap our weekend? I think we should. So Riley said that we got no sleep and that couldn't be more <laughs> accurate. We also slept three people to, was it a queen or a full? It had to have been a full, but also I feel like we, me, you and Dev specifically, we're so used to sharing a bed. It like didn't <laughs> phase us. We just slept on top of each other. I know it, it was actually fine, but I just feel like there was no time for sleep. No, no time for sleep. My flight was at 5 a.m. I live an hour from the airport. We boarded at 4.30, so we had to get there 
like with enough time to board. So Kayla and I, who we carpooled to the airport, we literally met at 2.45 a.m. That's so sick. And since then, I just never slept. (laughs) Did you get a good night's sleep last night? Oh my gosh, I actually did. I went to bed so early and waking up for work this morning was so unbelievably hard. I wish I took off. (laughs) I know some of the girls from our trip took off and I was like, oh, that was really smart. So smart, but power through. I think I'll feel better tomorrow. Hopefully my throat just figures it out. Yeah, we, we don't, we simply don't have time. We don't have time, but Rose and I were in Savannah for one of our best friends, Taylor's bachelorette party. And she is just like the most stunning, gorgeous bride. Her skin was glow, literally glowing. Like I can't get over her. She's so effortless, effortlessly beautiful. Mm -hmm. Everyone was replying to every picture I posted. Like, holy crap. She's so pretty. So pretty. Like, can you imagine her as a bride on her wedding day? I'm going to be a wreck. Me too. It was so fun though. Um, Riley took me, if you are a weekly listener, Riley took me to um, the praline store to try the pralines. And I was obsessed. I kept going back for more, hoping the lady wouldn't recognize that was. (laughs) No, the pralines are so good. And can you believe they give those out for free? I mean, I would literally pay for that. Oh, did you see Taylor got them to go? Oh my gosh, I forgot. Why didn't I get any to go? I'm so stupid. And and they dipped it in chocolate. So it's like a cluster. So good. Why didn't we do uh, it, right? I feel like we were just a little... There's like so much to do, so much to see. It was so nice out. We were like bopping yeah. around. We went to this super fun like outdoor rooftop bar. There was a slide. That was... I feel like the best days are just when you're like hanging out with your friends, the weather's super nice. And we were just like kind of bopping around having so much fun. We did a party peddler. Rose's sunglasses fell off of her head <laughs> in the middle of the streets. <laughs> I you had to run out and get them. It was just like so many funny things. There's nothing better than a girl's trip. There's nothing better. And it was so fun celebrating Taylor. I will say, I think like, we peak on party peddlers. And the reason why I've really thought about it is because the way they work, you're like forced to get a drink so fast. And then you have to like close out your tab. Then you want to get one to go to make sure you have one for the bus. And it's like, you're like running around. It's so chaotic. It's funny. You guys like, we're all laughing. And before you know it, you're like listening to music and you're like, oh my gosh, like we're really intoxicated. Like th- when did this happen? You're right. I feel like because it is go, 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 like bus, club, another club, another bar. It's so fun though. Okay. I do have to ask you, what are your thoughts? Like, do you think neutrals and high noons are comparable? So you guys, we were drinking seltzers on the party, party peddler because we didn't want to like be mixing around different stuff when you go to all these different bars. I'm sure everyone listening knows what a party peddler is, right? <laughs> I think so. Okay. If they're in the Duke crew, they surely know. <laughs> yeah. So we got on this neutral kick, which normally I'm like a high noon seltzer or bus kind of girl, but I love the neutral. Okay. So I'm going to rate the four seltzers Okay, in order. One being the best, four being the worst. Okay. Okay. Neutral number one. Wait, I should have went from last first. Okay, whatever. Neutral number one. High noon number two. Truly number three. Wet claw number four. Mine's the same. Okay, but I'm I'm debating. Like, I need to try neutrals one more time. Like more flavors, but that cranberry flavor. It was so good. I feel like I don't know. White Claws and Truly's hurt my stomach. I think it's the type of alcohol that's in them. And the neutrals are just like light and the flavor isn't overpowering and like fake. Mm -hmm. They're just really good. They're so good. So if you guys haven't tried them, try them. I think they'll be so good in the summer. Um, And yeah, we had a, we had a great time though. It flew by. It was very fast. Um, Oh, oh, what? I just wanted to tell you that I really missed my coffee and we should shout out that coffee shop that we walked to. Mirabelle. Whoa. Mirabelle's, you guys, is so good. It's like this little teeny little house that they made into a coffee shop and it's like so aesthetic and girly. Mm -hmm. And I'm not kidding. I was obsessed with my coffee. You got the same thing, but iced. I got it hot. Yeah. I love meals. So I used to get them all the time. 
years ago and um, I'll go to random coffee shops and ask them for it. And some places don't even know um, what it, what it is, but you can ask for it and mainly get it anywhere, which is the honey cinnamon, the honey and cinnamon with espresso and milk is like the standard, but this one also added vanilla and nutmeg and it was so yummy. So good. Yeah, you were. So it was on the menu. I'd never heard of it before. And you were saying they're super good. I'm like, okay, maybe I'll try it. And I was obsessed. I want to try to remake it at home. I need to get some nutmeg. Maybe I have yeah. some. Try it, right? Report back. Okay, I will. Um, can we tell them the one highlight of our, st- of our, not highlight, sorry, that's a little dramatic, but we had the craziest experience. I, did you tell, well, you did tell Kate, you told Kate yeah. when we were, I told Ryan and at first you'll understand guys, we're going to tell you, but at first he's like, were they fibbing? Were they lying? <laughs> I'm like, no, they were being so serious, but I, I didn't think I set the precedent of like Savannah being a big docking pourer and like all the different ethnicities so maybe Riley's better at telling stories than me so kind of start explaining it well I think number one we are a very gullible bunch but number two they 100% weren't lying like no. it was so crazy should I start at the photo booth or no yes okay well start with like how we even got to the photo booth how <laughs> well we got there because the bar closed right okay I'll just tell the pr- the preface, the prefacing, <laughs> and then take over. So basically, we when we walk into this bar, we go up an elevator to get to the bar. We open, like the elevator opens, and we're in this crazy, huge, kind of like rooftop in an outdoor bar. We stayed until the lights came on. Not kidding. We were the last ones there, and we're asking for encores. And yeah. then all of a sudden, the like security or whatever, like the people closing up, like scurried us to the like not the way we came in at all and Riley myself and two of our other friends got lost from the group and all of a sudden we're like on this terrace rooftop that does not look familiar at all 100% not how we came into the bar and then Riley will take over okay so we get hustled out of the bar we get like separated from our group and we find this little photo booth we're like oh (laughs) let's go take photos did you bring the photo booth photos uh, yeah I'll put I'll post the picture <laughs> okay okay yay I was wondering where those ended up but we're just like taking photos we're so carefree and this man like pops his head in to the photo booth and he's like hey what are you doing in there and no. we're like doing should I interrupt should I do it but in his like, accent yeah are people gonna think it's rude <laughs> no it, it was his accent okay do he it. was foreign he was foreign he goes Okay. Well, did you tell him that we were like fake kissing? No. Okay. Riley, you're leaving out very important details. (laughs) So you know how you guys, if you're not watching on YouTube, but you like put the cross of your thumbs over and you like pretend like you're kissing or I, I think I was kissing Riley's cheek and this guy peers around the corner. We thought we were the only ones on this terrace, random terrace. He goes, what are you doing? Do it again. (laughs) <laughs> well there was a curtain in the photo booth and he like peeked his head in the curtain and he's like what are you doing do that again <laughs> like kissing each other fake kissing <laughs> whatever it was just like funny we were being so silly and not serious at all and no. he was like so intrigued by us we're like oh and then we get out and we were like trying to figure out a way like how to get down to get an uber to go home we end up like in this elevator and he him and his group didn't they come in the elevator with us yes and we screamed <laughs> <laughs> they scared us because they hopped in the <laughs> elevator with us and so I'm I forget like we just got to talking or how did they tell us who they were well then we the elevator opens and we're in an art museum <laughs> it was like part of a hotel but I'm not kidding you guys we were like seeing dinosaur fossils <laughs> like and this security guard I I honestly think he might have been a ghost I think he was a ghost. He was the conduct the roof of the the Polar Express. That's exactly what he looked like, you guys. The he looked like ghost. The ghost. Yeah. So it was him. And he <laughs> kept scurrying us outside. And I think Riley just said, like, what are you doing here? And he the this first guy who was South African, he said, I work on a yacht. And at first Riley and I both understood it as like he works on like a yacht that you rent for the day for like a a party, a birthday or whatever. And then, right, I tell them what, how it escalated. Okay, so 
Then he was also with two engineers from the yacht and there was a girl who she was like a steward, I think is what they're called. Like she explained it as below deck where they're like serving the guests. Like that's what she does. And they're like, yeah, we get a lot of high profile people on the yacht and blah, blah, blah. And so they're like insinuating that it's someone like very high profile and famous that owns the yacht. And they were like, yeah, we're here because our yacht is actually being sold to someone who is like a, a billionaire. He's high profile, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, who is it? And they're like, oh, well, we can't tell you that. And for some reason, I was convinced it was Leonardo DiCaprio. Same. Why I thought that, I have no idea. But we're like, oh, so you work for Leo. Like we were being so annoying. And <laughs> so they annoying. were adamant adamant that they couldn't tell us whose yacht it was we were like okay well take us to the yacht like we want to see the yacht and they weren't allowed it there was definitely like an nda involved or something because of this person being so high profile Mm -hmm. and we were just really prying we were like okay well just give us like an a blink if we we say it right (laughs) i think one emily maybe said harry styles we threw out justin bieber um who else like Anyways, we found uh, they also slipped up saying the gender. They were like, he is, he, he's something. So we X out every single female and um, they were like, we asked if we could go see the yacht, of course, like being annoying, like Riley said, as we were, but they showed us a picture and in the picture, they also happened to like tell us the name of the boat which i'm not going to say the name because if only they knew we're telling our podcast this i know story. they're like we can't we're like we won't tell anyone if you tell us who's yana <laughs> is and now we're blasting it to the, the world um and so anyways they like wanted to go to another bar we wanted to go home so like the conversation was kind of just fizzling and they were just like it doesn't even matter who it is you're never gonna guess blah 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 and so we're just like walking we're about to separate to get our ubers and right you imitate the girl so well so say it wait do you okay so we're walking oh no Okay. We went our separate ways and we were like on the other side of the street at this point. And the girl goes, by the way, you guess who it is. You just have to figure out who. Is that what she said? Yeah. They were like, by the way, you said the right name. It's just your choice now to decide which one's right. So we're like screaming, freaking (laughs) out, going through our list. And the list we told you, like we said more names than that, but like, we're like, what names did we say? Which one was it? Like they were really like, the girl was like so straight up that it wasn't Justin Bieber. And like, we thought they, we really thought we had Leo on lock. Like it just felt fitting. We were being so annoying Mm -hmm. trying to get them to tell us who this yacht yacht owner was. And I was fully convinced it was Leonardo DiCaprio. Like they were probably like, we've got to get away from these girls. So we ended up figuring out who it is and we can't tell because we owe them that, but we'll give you a hint and you can feel, I mean, this is like, it's kind of public information if you really do yeah. dig, do your digging. Um, but what what hint should we give? Something about the wife? Yes. The wife is beyond mainstream. One of the most popular people in the world, honestly. Yeah. She's slaying right now, too, with a new album. <laughs> <laughs> And that's all she wrote, folks. Now, moving on to what's in our cart. Okay. <laughs> because we, we'll, we'll end up telling them if we keep chatting. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Why am I pulling up the phone like I'm reading something? <laughs> <laughs> Girls' room. Um, so what's in my cart? Oh, I wanted to talk about... I've talked about this before on the podcast, but it came in so clutch this weekend. I brought my little new compact travel mirror. So the Airbnb we stayed in, it was amazing. Like this old Victorian style home that was like completely redone and renovated. It was so nice. Mm-hmm. But the bathroom situation, it was like made for one person. It was just like small, tight quarters. And so I brought my little travel mirror and was able to set it up anywhere in the house with good lighting. And it was just such a lifesaver. So I'm going to link it because I also did not check a bag. I just bought a carry on. So everything had to be super compact. And it was like the perfect, I was so thankful I brought it. So it's from Amazon, super cheap. I will link that. And then I also wanted to talk about, I got a new water bottle because I'm not drinking out of my Stanley anymore because of the straw. And everyone's saying that it causes wrinkles around your mouth. And the lead. I'm, I don't want to drink it anymore because of the lead. Well, I feel like the lead 
it's not like we're not exposed to the lead. It's just like in the like casing yeah. of the bottle and it's like not seeping in. But that's also definitely a valid yeah. reason. Um, so I got this like a walla one that actually Lauren Bostick posted. We love I, her. Literally, Riley, I'm not even joking. I I'm like when Lauren Bostick has the Awala, I'm like, I have to get this. You got I it. I got it. Do you love it? I got it and I love it. And so I will link it because it was also an Amazon find. And it's so funny. I was FaceTiming Kay the other day and it was on the kitchen counter. And he's like, did you seriously buy another water bottle? <laughs> um, I literally have two Stanleys and a whole cabinet full of water bottles. I'm like, no. <laughs> I know. I feel like it. it's needed though. Like we've had our Stanleys a while. They've seen their yeah. time. Everyone's raving about this Uwala. Have you worked out with it yet? No, I, um, I work out with it here, but I don't take it to my gym just cause I don't want to take in germs on it. Oh my hell. You guys, you should have <laughs> seen Riley this weekend. Everywhere I look, she'd be like, Hey, just so you know, a cockroach is coming behind you. I'm like, no, <laughs> never. I never said that. I'm Ever. like, Riley, you have hallucination of cockroaches. I swear. Uh, no, me and Emily do hallucinate cockroaches. In you new hallucinate. Places. You guys also at the bar, I wore the worst heels ever. And so I took my shoes off when we were meeting this boat family. And <laughs> I took They it. were not a family. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, they were from all over the world, truly. But I was at my wits end, my shoes, my feet, my blisters. It was so bad. So I had socks on underneath and some of our friends were barefoot and I was like totally supporting them because you have to do what you have to do. And Emily was telling me that my socks had ticks on them because I was walking the streets of Savannah with my socks. She wouldn't let, she told me I had to take them off before I got in the house, but I did it. <laughs> me and Emily, we thrive off of each other in our germ issues you do what the heck your, your gym is probably so clean uh, it's actually not okay fair what well <laughs> I link it because I'll buy it off your no, link no I my home gym is clean I meant the gym that I go like that I have my trainer at I knew what you meant oh I didn't of course of course gym your dirty. gym would be clean I would hope <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Okay. Well, I'll link the Owala. And then I just restocked my hair oil. I've used the Unite um, one for blondes. It's like a purple hair oil. And I use it on hair wash days. I put in my ends and it's just like the best. I've tried other ones and this one is the best. So I'll link it. I feel like you can always trust Unite products. They're easy mm -hmm. to get. And yeah, that's pretty much it for me. That's a good one. Well-versed. <laughs> Thank you. What? Is that the right saying? Well-versed? Yeah, you said. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. I have a product request that I promise I'll do my research on before I like post on Wednesday. But obviously, Riley, if you have a recommendation or anyone listening has a re recommendation, this is off of last week's girl's room. Remember how she asked about waxing and laser hair yeah. removal and all that. So I'm really in the process of, I think I'm going, a couple of people replied that got laser ride and they were saying like best thing ever. It's like a commitment for a year, but it, once you buy it for this one girl specifically said, even if like your hormones change and you get, you have like a lifetime warranty to like get it fixed up after they, the artist deems that like you. Wow. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well that makes me feel better because if like I were to get pregnant one day and it, whatever. That's so off subject. But I was telling the audience, if you didn't listen last week, is that ever since I started getting waxed, I never dealt with this before, but I think the technique, like I randomly get an ingrown and I just, I don't, I hate it. So I am saying all of this to say that I'm going to try and find like a good ingrown hair product or like some sort of I don't know. I've seen people on TikTok talk about it. So I'm going to do my research. But if anyone listening has rec, let me know. But I'll link what I come up with because I feel like it's more common than not. I just never dealt with it up until mm -hmm. getting waxed. So I'm just like, I can't do this. Like, I, it's not mm -hmm. a vibe. Not a vibe. So that's my first one. And then my second one is again, tanking on the brand. So you have to make sure you follow us to see what I link because I'll find it. But it's, that hair oil that everyone raves about that helps with hair scalp health and hair grow. It's like in an amber bottle with like green and white or green and pink. No clue. I think I want to say it starts with an M, but I've just heard like the 
greatest reviews of like it actually working, it being clean. And you guys know I'm like trying to get on my hair health journey. So I'm going to link that because I like my JVN, but I maybe will like add it or maybe... Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just try different ones to see what works best. So that's my second thing. And then the last thing is, you guys, I am so overdue for like a good quality bra. Do you have a quality like bra that you love, Rye? Yeah, I love it so much that I got it in tan and black. It's the only one I wear. Can you link it? Yeah, it's Wacol from Nordstrom. Wait, did we talk about this this weekend? Yeah, we did. Oh my I couldn't gosh. remember if it was you or someone else that asked. Because that brand uh, sounded familiar because I thought you, like, I thought at first you were going to say Wayfair. And <laughs> I was like, what? I don't think Riley would buy a bra off Wayfair. <laughs> um, okay. Wow. I literally wrote this down, not even remembering we had this combo. I think that was around the party peddler <laughs> moment. <laughs> Little blurry. <laughs> Little blurry. Um, yeah. Please link it because I'm, I'll spare, like, mine is so bad. It's just ridiculous. And I need a new one. Do you wear the same bra for everything? Yes. And I'm not kidding. It's only strapless. So I, I'm, <gasps> yeah. I, yeah, that's why I had to get this other bra in a different color because I wore it. It was like my only, I had other options, but I only wore that one. I feel like every girl is that way. Like you have your favorite bra and that's that. Right. And so is yours strapless and the straps can come off or what's the stitch? Yeah. It's convertible. Perfect. Say less. I will literally, I'm buying your whole cart. So perfect. Um, isn't it so funny though, thinking back to the days of like the Victoria's Secret rhinestone app, like ultra push up bra lace, the most oh. uncomfortable things ever, but we lived for them. The bombshell and my boobs didn't come in for <laughs> so long. So I just wore it all the time in hopes to look like I had boobs. Okay. Not to expose you right now, but I swear to God, you guys, one time Riley woke up one day, like did, like she said, she did not have boobs for forever and then woke up one day with literally C's. <laughs> Wait, really? I don't remember Rye, that. you don't remember this? Remember because like, we'd always be like, Rye, like, when are your boobs going to come in? <laughs> <laughs> and then I all wonder of a sudden, how old I was when I got them. I feel like it was a late bloom. You were late, but ended up having the best boobs out of any, any of us. They just said, we're waiting and we're going to be full grown in one night. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> but long live Victoria's Secret. Like, thank God we don't wear those anymore because what, like, awful experience. Not functional. <laughs> no. And like rhinestone thongs. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> I'm so sick. I'm sick for us. Okay, but that's it. The bra, the oil, and the ingrown. I can't wait to see the oil that you couldn't remember the name of it. I'm dying to know what it is. So you'll definitely, definitely like, recognize it. Okay. Describe it or like if you had to think, if you had to guess the name, what would you think? I'm I know this is wrong, but I'm gonna say Miel. Oh, <laughs> not not the cafe Miel <laughs> coffee. I think that's why it's in my head, but I swear it's an M. Okay. We're going to hold you to it. We'll see, guys. But you'll have to go to What's in Our Cart to figure it out. But I think we should go ahead and get our guest. Okay, let's go get her. We are so excited to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Trumi. Elevate your wellness routine with Trumi's super-powered mushrooms. We have been absolutely loving the benefits of Trumi's functional mushroom gummies. They are formulated with a curated selection of natural ingredients for superior wellness benefits. So what kind of mushrooms are in Trumi gummies? Adaptogenic are not the same thing as hallucinogenic or quote unquote magic mushrooms. These fungi do not have any influence on your perception or mind, so they cannot cause intoxication at any level. Trumi offers a wide range of gummies, including sleep, shine, focus, calm, and more. I honestly cannot pick my favorite. And I know, Riley, you feel the exact same way. They're all so good. Yes. I took some Trumi Calms before our travel day and it helped me so much. I just, if anyone gets flight anxiety or driving anxiety, Trumi Calm will save your day. And it really did help so much. So we've worked out a special offer for our audience. You can receive 30% off, which is amazing, of any Trumi order. Go to Trumi.com and enter DO30 at checkout to get 30% off. That's T-R-O-O-M-Y.com and enter D-O-U-30. Thank you, Trumi. We love you. Today, we are sitting down with influencer and reality TV personality, Renee Ash. Hi, Renee. It's so nice to have you. 
Thank you for having me. It's so nice to meet you girls. We are so excited to dive into this episode. I just want to know, and I know our audience will want to know as well, just we have to ask, what do you have in your cup tonight? I have in my cup, let me check. <laughs> it's a pineapple and blood orange mocktail. Ooh, Yum. Yeah. That sounds amazing. So I'm like getting hydration as I fig drink. <laughs> Perfect. We always say that everything tastes better in a wine glass. Wouldn't you agree? Or in a little coupe. Like a champagne. Yes. yes. That's like elegant and chic. I love that. Totally. A hundred percent. Well, we are super excited to have you on. We have some really fun Q&A questions to ask you, but if you don't mind just introducing yourself and telling your story to anyone who might not be a follower already. Yeah. Um, my name is Renee Ash, obviously. Um, I have been thrown into the social media world and I have been focusing on fashion, beauty, but the most exciting part of it all is like my chaotic lifestyle. Um, I do a ton of traveling and I'm just a hot mess in all the best <laughs> ways. So I like to share that with my audience. And uh, the most exciting news recently, as you said, is I have a reality dating show airing on May 9th on Peacock. So oh excited. We cannot wait to watch. I'm so excited to watch myself. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> so uh, just curious, have you gotten to see anything before or is the first time it airs what you're, what you're going to see? First time it airs is the first time that we're all going to see it. It's, oh. yeah, it's going to be shocking, I'm sure. <laughs> It'll be amazing. Oh, oh my gosh. It's also going to be weird to watch that part of life, like, thrown in my face again. I feel like the crazy thing about reality TV is that you have to live it, people film it, and then once it airs, you have to relive those moments again, mm -hmm. whether they're good or bad. And it's just like, it's hard sometimes. Yeah, It's going to be very interesting. It really is for everybody. Like for me and the entire cast, we've been talking about how, it, you know, in these shows, it's filmed about a year from when it airs. And mm -hmm. so to go back to last summer, you know, you move on from each summer so quickly, but to go back and relive last summer, it just feels like some weird experiment that I did. And now it's going to be broadcasted worldwide. Oh my gosh. That actually is such a great description of like how you explained it. I'm really excited for it. I will say Riley, I don't know if you knew Renee, but Riley and I were actually on a reality TV show. And I feel like one of the weirdest parts was seeing everyone else's interview um, when they would go into the room and interview after a situation that happened in person. I'm like, oh, that's what you said in the interview room. Nice well, to sure know. <laughs> um, a reality show that followed our dance team on, um, oh my gosh, Riley, why am I blanking on the network? It was on Lifetime, and it was a couple years ago when we were in college. Wait, Rose, what year was that? 2017? Yeah, so a while. <laughs> so long ago. <laughs> yes. Almost 10 years, if you think about it, which is nuts. Oh, my gosh. I know. Oh, I my crazy. gosh. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. That makes me crazy. feel really old. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. Riley and I are... Too. Yeah. So, oh. Yeah. We were all in a different part of our lives then. Yes. <laughs> Extremely. 100%. Like, I was so different back in 2017 than I am now. I was like, I dressed like the first lady. And <laughs> well, I was in my, um, <laughs> yeah, I guess I was first lady Renee back then. Now oh I don't my know gosh. what this era is. Reality TV Renee. <laughs> we love this era. Oh, no. Well, I think that we should hop right into our Q&A um, because we've already kind of started talking about our first question. So I'll just read it. Um, what can we expect from your new reality TV show? Give us the gist. Tell us anything you're allowed to say. Even okay. give us some inside yeah. scoop if you're feeling crazy. <laughs> I, you have to tune in for inside scoops. And trust me, <laughs> you're going to want to. And I heard that one of you is a wag. Oh, my husband is a, a baseball player. Yeah. 
Okay, so this goes right up your alley. Um, it's called Yay. Love Undercover. And what's undercover is that there are five international footballers, as in soccer players, and they come to America, specifically L.A., to find love for what really counts on the inside. Um, so they put on these fake personas as general managers of restaurants, as ad salesmen, as construction workers, as Airbnb managers. I mean, it was wild how much they stuck to their stories and the crazy stories that they came up with, like to convince us that they really were these jobs. But, um, wow. How many people are on it? Uh, there were five guys, like I said, and a lot of girls at one point, but you know, okay. girls are sent home and choosing to go home. The great part about this show is, um, a lot of it was in the women's favor. So in the beginning, the women are in charge. They choose who they want to date. And then later on, it flips to the men are in power. So what, if it was like a surprise as to what these men's, um, what their profession was, what did you think you were like going on a reality show for? Like, did they tell you anything about the premise? I was told that the Prince of Spain was waiting for me potentially. So I was like, yeah, I'll be there. And uh, I get there and to my surprise, it's all of these like quote unquote regular jobs. So I was like, there's so much footage of me and the girls talking about how the show has no plot and we don't get what's going on and something wasn't adding up looking back it makes sense why it wasn't adding up. And I looked back on all the times where I was like, there were so many hints, but, oh. um, uh, there's already in the trailer, me and my girlfriends were sitting around, like the men are lying about who they are. <gasps> oh, we didn't know gosh. why. Oh my gosh. I have to go watch the trailer again. Now that I'm getting like the, the inside scoop. Um, how many episodes is it? It'll be 10 episodes. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, I feel like this is something I'm going to binge in like one day. It sounds so good. Well, it comes out with a drop of three episodes, another drop of three, oh. and then a drop of four. So you're just going to have to wait per week. Binge it and then you're going to have to wait. Oh my gosh. Okay. So um, what is it on again? What uh, streaming platform? It's on Peacock. So you've got Perfect. everything. You've got Vanderpump Rules there. You've got Love is Blind. You have Traders. And then while well, all those are off season, here we come. And do you know what time of day? Oh, oh my gosh. I'm so silly. Just ignore me. I was going to ask what time. It's it's literally on a streaming platform. You can Forget watch it whenever you want. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. I don't know how old am I 80 that I think we're so on using TV. I mean, I act like I'm 80 years old. So <laughs> there's two grandmas, yeah. Well, we cannot wait to tune in. Sounds like it's gonna be a crazy ride. Um, yay. So our next question. We saw that you attended the Grammys. Tell us about your experience. Did you have any celeb run-ins? Oh my god, the Grammys was so fun. Um it was on my bucket list to go and it was a great year to go because Afrobeats is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite genres of music and Burna Boy performed and I was screaming the entire time. <laughs> um, I was very close to the floor. So I saw a lot of people including, you know, Taylor, Lana Del Rey, Billie Eilish, Miley, like you name it. They, I saw it with my horrible vision, meaning I <laughs> zoomed in on my phone. Um, but my favorite was still Burn a Boy, which is like not a normal answer, but that man, I mean, he can do no wrong in music, in my opinion. <laughs> so did you get to see like what was it like seeing behind the scenes? Like how much commercial break and oh, like, what about that? It kind of ruins the magic, I have to say. But also like doing TV shows and being on commercials and doing ads and stuff. Like I already kind of expected that the magic would be ruined because mm -hmm. it's 
such a set. Um, but nonetheless, you're seeing SZA go off. I mean, I don't know what Travis Scott's performance was, but it was interesting. Uh, he like all of a sudden started just smashing chairs and I was like, what? <laughs> but Miley was iconic. And when she threw that mic down, I was like, that is a girl after my own heart. And also when she said she had no underwear on, I was also like, me too, girlfriend. Same. Wait, I don't remember her saying she had no underwear on. <laughs> it was in that open acceptance speech. She was like saying something, how she didn't think she forgot anyone in her speech, but I might've forgotten my underwear and then booked it. <laughs> I She's freaking iconic. love her. And I love this era of her. I know. It's like it's so her good. DGAF era. Where she's just empowered completely by herself. I love it. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, love. Well, that is so cool that you got to go to the Grammys. I feel like you totally manifested that. Yeah. I have a friend who works in music and is high up there and invited me. And I was like, you know, you don't have to. <laughs> but I think because I played it so cool, then I was the one who ended up going. <laughs> How did Amazing. you pick what to wear? Uh, I went to a showroom. And I got this really cool purple suit, uh, like purple and black suit with these crazy, fun, sequin purple boots. And actually the day of, I was rushing like crazy and it was raining. And my mom is an amazing hairdresser. She was doing my hair. It was like to the last few minutes and the pants did not fit. So I just took them, ripped them off and then went in a blazer dress. So... Oh my gosh. Yeah, I had about five options and then the blazer dress was the one that made it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love you hearing the behind the scenes. Me too. Okay. Next question. What is your favorite thing about being an influencer? Oh, my favorite thing about influencing is when I can connect with somebody that I probably wouldn't have the chance to um, on a regular day, just because of the accessibility that the internet provides. Um, I have been through hard times and I've shared those hard times on the internet and what the best part of it was for me is having somebody say, thank you for speaking out because I have been through something like this and not enough people speak about it, or I don't have the platform like you do, or, just feeling heard. And those are my favorite moments beyond having fun, taking pictures, taking trips, like going to showrooms and getting free clothes. Those are my absolute favorite moments. We always say too, like in the sense of the podcast, having a community of listeners and like being able to connect with people, like you said, who you wouldn't be able to without social media. And you feel like you kind of know someone through social media, it really is such an amazing thing. Yeah. And I've become friends with them. And even though we haven't met up or like possibly never will meet up, um, I have girls who come to me for advice all the time. And I'm like, I don't know how I'm your person to give you advice, but I will do it. <laughs> It makes you I feel so that. much less alone too. Like you were sharing, like sharing those vulnerable moments. And when people are like, thank you so much for sharing. You're like, oh my gosh, even for me, I'm like, it's reassuring to hear that I'm not the only one feeling this. So I totally Absolutely. agree. Me too. So kind of just going off of that question, what is your least favorite thing about being an influencer? Least favorite thing about being an influencer is how tied up you get to views and likes and shares and DMs and tags and just what it's not meant to be about. Um, because I've changed my audience and before, like I said, I got thrown into this. I didn't mean to, but, um, it was kind of for, my life. And then I went to do this show. And so I was gone for two months and then that affected my engagement. So I came back, changed it to fashion and beauty and my lifestyle. And it's just hard to switch over your audience. And it's defeating when you put, <clears throat> excuse me, when you put 
so much effort into making a beautiful piece of content. And then you go on, let's say TikTok, and there's somebody mouthing the lyrics to a song and there's no reason for it. And it has, which good for them, but it has millions of views and likes. And I'm like, I just spent hours editing and went to an amazing location and put together a beautiful outfit and like did so much to make this a magnificent piece of content. And then this lip syncing is getting views. The algorithm is something crazy. The algorithm, I swear, hates me. I am like not (laughs) recommended on Instagram in the back end and TikTok. I am banned from lives forever. So... I'm also not recommended. Wait, how did you get banned? Because of stupid haters. I guess enough people reported me that I got banned forever. Wait, that is so sad. So sad. So like if any takeaway from this podcast, it's operation, get Renee unbanned from TikTok. (laughs) We'll do it. Come on, do crew. Let's let's get this together. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Riley and I always talk about it too. We're like, you will try so hard on one and you're like, this is going to be such a good idea. And it's always the ones that you don't think about and just like throw up that go viral or get the most views. I'm like, how does this happen? <laughs> it's the dumbest things I've posted that have gotten the most interaction. Right. Sad. <laughs> I have some points. I'm like, so I give crazy. up. I give up. I'm just going to start looking hot and then saying something (laughs) bitchy that's a sound and then post that and let's call it a day. Right. (laughs) Hopefully you have a viral um, sound bite from the reality show that could go viral on TikTok. (laughs) That'll be your ticket. I know know (laughs) that there, I can't share them, but I know there are a few and I am waiting to see what happens with them. Oh, I can't wait. We're going to die. And it's in I my... I can't room. wait. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. We'll have to use the sounds, Rose, on our yeah. Drinks on Us TikTok. I love yeah. it. <laughs> okay, next question. What advice do you have for any of our listeners who are trying to move on from past relationships? Ooh, it's so hard. It really is. So that's my first piece of advice is it is really hard and don't try to force yourself to move on when you have to do all the healing because that'll prolong it. Um, I would say most importantly is to take the time to feel really shitty uh, and be sad and don't try to like party it away or distract yourself too much distract yourself in a healthy way to where you can still get things done in your life, but come home afterwards and cry it out. If you have to, um, it's important to have at least one person that you trust where you can go to and they don't get annoyed by how much you talk about the breakup and to just spill your guts, no matter if it's embarrassing or not. Um, no matter how many times you've said it, because, that at least one person will be there for you and say everything is valid, everything you're feeling is valid because no matter what in a breakup, no matter what you're feeling, I feel like you can judge yourself so easily for still being hung up on someone who's really not good for you, but it's still valid to feel hurt by it. Um, Therapy is a great option. (laughs) I did a lot of that during the last breakup. Um, And I would just say being honest with yourself. So again, you don't prolong your healing process. Like you can't pretend to yourself that you're not hurt or pretend that you're everything is jolly and dandy Um, or else again, it just shows up later on. And do you want it to take a long time? No. You want it to be as fast as possible so you can get on with your life. But also the most beautiful things come out of breakups. Like one, Mm -hmm. you do get hotter every time a man (laughs) hits you. It's just a given fact. Um, Number two, you usually look at your life and think, what can I improve here? So like they're not always a bad thing, even though they do Mm -hmm. feel really shitty in the moment. Uh, But I just look back on my breakups and think about, how much has changed every time 
and how much better my life has gotten. Um, if it weren't for my last breakup, I wouldn't be in the position I'm in now where I did this great show and may or may not have met somebody and who knows where it's going to go from there. I okay. love that perspective. I was going to say the same thing, Riley. That was incredible advice. Like just let yourself truly feel everything because the healing part, like you got to heal at some point. So do it now. Oh, I'm later. sure people are sick of me crying. Like I probably used up all my tears to my friends for the rest of my life. <laughs> That's what friends are for. Yes, but it's necessary. And if you have genuine friends in your life, they're never going to be like, okay, enough. Right. Or they will to smack you out of it. And maybe you need it. I don't know. <laughs> Either or. Right. I love that advice. So do you think that the age we're in with social media makes it harder to date than it would if social media wasn't as prominent? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't even know why. Let me like simmer on that for a second. Well, I feel like if you didn't have social media, you wouldn't really know if someone's like a good egg. I've never used that term in my life. Um, <laughs> or not I feel like you just like be with them and then get married a lot quicker so thankfully to social media like there's more options but that's the downfall is that there are so many options mm -hmm. that I feel like people give up really easily and don't fight right. for relationships they just will get on Raya or on Instagram because it does go down in the DMs <laughs> 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 I also feel like everyone is comparing their relationship relationship to someone else's relationship or like comparing their boyfriend to this person they see on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Instagram is fake. That's a, that's a highlight reel. It's not ever what it seems. And so I feel like there's not realistic expectations because of social media. Oh, absolutely. I just came across a video today of this guy being like, it's flower Friday time to get my girlfriend her flowers every Friday. But like how much do you want to bet they got in a fight and that's why flower Friday started like not to be a pessimist, Literally. but just to prove like it's not real. None of it's real. It's like the happiest of people's moments or they're faking it for the most right. part. Yeah. I mean, you think about just like the act of him like setting up the camera to say like to go pick up the flowers. I'm like, wait, was that genuine or not? Because you had I know, <laughs> one, it's great and it's cute because it sets expectations for other men. But also yeah. I feel like when you have to post a good act that you did, it's not genuine. But who am I to judge? I don't know where his intentions are coming from. True. But yes, dating is harder because of social media and like Let's think about it. You get in a fight with your boyfriend. You're worried about them going and DMing some girls or, oh my God, my biggest thing is whatever their for you page looks like. You have to check the for you page. That'll tell you everything you need to know. For you page tells all. Yeah. Yeah. If it's I feel like true. Like, can you imagine dating things? like years and years and years ago, like how you met people. And like, there was, there was none of that comparison. There wasn't the chance to like distract yourself with all these, I don't know, temptations, if you will, for lack of better words that social media can bring. It's kind of crazy. No wonder everyone was married at 20 and had 10 children. <laughs> can we go back to that? I don't know. I know, right? <laughs> right. We live in a crazy world. I know, especially here in LA, it's, I forget that I'm in a bubble. Were you raised, like born and raised in LA or, yeah? Oh yeah, I tried to move to New York. I made it a winter and a half. Mm -hmm. um, the weather like did not allow me personally to stay. <laughs> it said get back to LA. Our last question for you is, what would your advice be to someone who is trying to get into influencing? Oh God. Um, okay. Best advice is to look at the market, see what's out there and find where you fit in that is missing from the masses. Um, whether it be in fashion, what twists can you bring to fashion? Um, for example, I've 
seen this girl come up a bunch where she is wearing the most chic outfits, but she is going off dancing in the middle of the street and she's not wearing dance attire. She is wearing business casual, but super elevated and chic. And that catches my eye. If it's makeup, like, I don't know. Story times are such a thing with makeup, so I can't even tell you what the missing part is in that one. But I would just say find what is missing in your favorite category and bring a twist that nobody has or that very little have. And have it be genuine because the more genuine you are, the more people can recognize that. Mm -hmm. I love that. I would say like being yourself on social media, I feel like that will always do the best just because like you said, people can tell when you're not being genuine or when you're saying you're using a product that you're clearly not using. It's just like little things like that people can totally sense. Absolutely. Like you would a hundred percent be able to tell if I'm faking using a product because it's not going to come across the same way as when I'm obsessed with something and yeah. I'm like, you need this now. Um, totally. Yeah. You really also do. too. Like, yeah. Also too. <laughs> I have no idea what I was going to say. <laughs> um, just what you said at the very beginning of the episode, when you were talking about sharing really hard moments, like those are the hardest things to share because you just feel so vulnerable, but we just, we, I mean, we went on a little spew about how it always comes back to like people become, they trust you more because they feel like they know you behind what you see the perfect pictures on that you post to your feed. Like they want to know you to your core. Yeah. Like I've cried on my social media before, um, just to show like days aren't always great. Like Mm -hmm. this is what it feels like a lot of the time and it's okay that it feels that way. And I've also, um, just like been very authentic in the sense that life feels really shitty some days. Um, speaking of, I just have to be, I think this is a good reminder to be a little bit more authentic on my social media because I guess I haven't been (laughs) lately and Uh, (laughs) I got to get back to that. See, we're all learning. Yeah. I I feel like we're going to get a really authentic side of you on May 9th or whatever date your show comes out. (laughs) Oh my God. I'm scared. (laughs) Are you? Don't be scared. (laughs) I've said the weirdest stuff I've ever said in my life, I think. (laughs) Well, there's no turning back now. Too late. You put a camera in front of me and it is game over. And so... (sighs) God knows. I I don't even know what I said on there. It's like, I would say it's a blackout, but I fully was like there enjoying myself. So just watch out. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Oh my gosh. Well, we are going to pivot into our girls room segment. So Renee, this is an anonymous advice segment where our listeners will submit, um, any advice needed into this little form that we have. So we always do three questions. Number one, ladies, what are your thoughts on Botox and filler? I'm 25 and I feel like that's the age that people start getting Botox for preventative reasons, but I'm nervous to start help. Am I going first? Sure. Okay. Now is your time to start. 25 (laughs) is the age. (laughs) If not yesterday, Um, there is nothing (laughs) wrong with Botox and filler. I wish I had started a bit sooner because these things are so aggressive and they will not go away. And I have full Botox right now, but there is also nothing wrong with being your absolutely natural self. Whatever Mm -hmm. makes you feel the best and most confident, there is nothing wrong with. I totally agree with that. I feel like it's so important to do whatever makes you feel the most confident, um, I started Botox, I think at 25, like right before my wedding. And it does just make me feel more confident. But if you don't need it, then you don't need it. Like Rose, I don't think you even get Botox because you literally don't, you don't have any wrinkles. I want, I want to get it, but I'm, I don't want to force it. Like I'll tell Riley, like every six months, I'll like send a video. I'll be like, do I need Botox yet? That's your forehead with no Botox? Yeah. Renee, it's it's not fair. (laughs) 
but I'm not against it at all. I think like you, to both of your points, like you just have to do, find a esthetician too that you trust that can be like, you know, do the the right amount or I don't know. I'm, why am I the one speaking on like the, <laughs> the esthetician side? But like, if you're scared of it, like there's, you can always find good people who at what they do. And it's not like it's a, I think some people have a fear of like looking like completely frozen or like oh, no. their fillers too much. Like you just have to do what you feel is going to make you the most confident and no one should judge you for that. There's ways to go about it so naturally. Like I think I've gotten my lips to the point where you can tell maybe, but before that, uh, nobody would even know that I had anything. Um, but I do like having, it's just such a struggle of like wanting to look super natural, but then also wanting to have these like big juicy lips. Well, they look amazing. Thank yeah. You. I have a great doctor. If you're LA based, Dr. Dorfman <laughs> he maps your face out. He is a genius and so young. It's amazing to watch him. I totally agree with both of you. Finding someone that you trust is so important. And for this person who submitted, if it's your first time and you're nervous, you can always start super, super small and then go from there. And also Botox is not forever. I wish it was, so it never wore off. But (laughs) if you hate it, like it'll wear off. (laughs) Yes, true. And filler, you can always get dissolved. And yeah, I wish it would last forever. Like it's a struggle. It's (laughs) It's the ultimate struggle. Super RBF all the time. (laughs) (laughs) No, you look great. Yes. Okay. Okay. Next question. This one's kind of a long one. I'm in a sticky situation of not getting along with my boyfriend's older brother's wife, basically my sister-in-law. I've had my experiences with toxic friendships and relationships. At this point, I confidently know what kind of friendships and people I want and choose in my life. She is not one of those people. As potential sisters-in-law, we always... We'll always be bound to cross paths. Staying away is the safest way to protect myself. And am I ruining the family dynamic? What is your perspective? No, I think setting boundaries is one of the healthiest things that you can do for yourself and your mental health and talk to your boy. I mean, I'm sure she has talked to her boyfriend about it, but talk to your boyfriend about it. Let him know you're going to set these boundaries and the right partner will be on your side for it. Um, Mm. But I don't think you should feel bad about taking care of yourself first because then, in my opinion, you can't take care of anybody else. And if somebody's not good for you, whether they're family or not, or like chosen family, which this person is, it's okay to set boundaries and it's okay to go to family gatherings, but not be besties if you once were. It's just changing the dynamic and creating respect for yourself. Yes, Renee. Um, I was sorry, Ray. Um, I was going to say the same thing. Like there's probably the big holidays that you may need to like be around one another and, you know, just be civil and maybe have small talk or just not gravitate towards her in a room. But if you don't vibe with her and and you don't feel good when you're around her, then like you don't have to hang out with her all the time. And um, I, I agree to your point too. If it just doesn't, your boyfriend's not seeing eye to eye with balance of all of it, then maybe he's not the right partner, which is probably not what you want to hear, but the the right person will, (laughs) the right person will respect that and see where you're coming from. I would think. Yes, I would totally agree. Setting boundaries is so important in all aspects of your life, especially with something like this. However, I would caution, you don't want to burn a bridge or like cause any family drama or animosity between the two sides, just because there's nothing worse than family drama. So I think you definitely can set boundaries while still being able to be cordial at like family gatherings. There you go. You heard it three times. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Last submission. I love this podcast and you girls. I called off my engagement about a year ago and have been on dating apps trying to meet someone new, but the apps just aren't doing it. Any suggestions on how to meet a guy, especially when I don't have many friends around here? Go on a reality show. Just kidding. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Dating apps have never done it for me ever. Um, I've met people like the most successful way I've met people and had a relationship is from organically meeting in person. And also it's annoying, but everybody says it when you are not looking for it. 
Um, I don't know. I'm going to let you guys take that one because (laughs) dating, especially in LA has not been a successful story. (laughs) I think you're to your point, Renee, too, like you have to be willing to get uncomfortable and go out and about. So maybe you love working out. Maybe you love, I don't know, like playing pickleball or whatever the case may be, like putting yourself out there and like saying hi to a guy that even if you, or when you're grocery shopping, I don't even know what it is, but like you have to be willing to go meet people or maybe meet girlfriends that can then you can go out with and they can be your wingmans. It sounds like you said you don't have like too many friends in the area. So I think maybe getting uncomfortable and meeting people in person, you're going to understand like if you vibe with them. Cause I think dating apps are just, I don't, I never had to have a dating app. Thank goodness. But like, oh, I don't really, I, I just feel like they're, it's hard to like, it's hard to get the true picture of what you're getting. So I could understand how that could be a challenge. Um, So that would be my advice, I think. I don't know, Rye, what would you say? I agree with what you said, Rose, about getting out of your comfort zone and even saying hi to someone um, like can lead to so much. I actually follow this girl on Instagram. I do not know her personally, but she's very vulnerable and she met her current boyfriend. I don't think they're engaged, but she met her boyfriend. They're very serious, literally on an airplane, like on Southwest. They just happened to be sitting next to each other and now they're like, one in the same. So you never know when you're going to find true love. (laughs) I do have to say I'm never against a girl going up and making the first move. I have done it many times and there is no shame as long as you then pull back and let them do the work and pursue you. Totally. Totally agree. I love that. Well, I think this concludes our happy hour. Thank you so much, Renee, for joining us. This was so much fun and it was so great talking with you. We will definitely link your socials um, so anyone can follow you and find you. Yeah, I'm going to have to get back to like posting the more vulnerable stuff. That is my (laughs) takeaway from this chat. Um, I love it. It was so great meeting you both. Yes. Oh my gosh. You were a blast. We can't wait to all the do crew is going to watch and support Renee on your reality show. Guys, don't forget May 9th and we will tag your Instagram, but where can everybody find you? You can find me at Renee period Ash on both TikTok and Instagram. Yay. Have the best week. You guys we will see you same time, same place in the same room next week. Yay. Love you, Ryan. Love you. Bye. Bye.